good evening everybody thanks for joining so today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the innovation mindset in the context of uh, the current the rural education or whether they are students or whether we are teachers whether we are volunteers so how uh, we can do things differently so that overall outcome is anyway all of us are aware we have limited resource but we have very very creative people all around whether they are students or whether they are teachers or volunteers they are really if you look at uh, uh, on a standalone basis each one of us are really uh, creative and it is just uh, that we, we are uh, withholding our ability that's what we, i say we, i don't think uh, we need to uh, invest too many things here it is just the way of uh, changing our uh, uh, thinking that's what i feel is innovation but uh, to anyway to listen from the horse's mouth uh, uh, we have uh, amongst us uh, 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 we call uh, favoritely sharma sir kollegala sharma so he uh, uh, as a profession uh, he just uh, retired from cftri as a senior scientist but more than that i know him as an innovator as well as uh, a passionate teacher and a mentor and of course science is very close to him maybe because of his passion or job uh, let's hear from him and he has been uh, creating podcasts uh, he started single handedly i really appreciate how he has sustained uh, and still he continues over last 3 uh, years now uh, maybe four let's hear from him the final details every day we, we also keep waiting for the podcast uh, it, he delivers in canada it's uh, 8 to 10 minutes of a podcast uh, earlier he used to do it weekly once now uh, since the demand increased he decided despite it does not matter for he is also showing uh, age is a number so he <laughs> continues and uh, and he he uh, yeah every day whether it's uh, whether he is well or not well or whether <laughs> so physically physical body allows him or not i don't know what magic he does uh, uh, definitely the podcast will be there whether google works or youtube works does not matter we will keep getting the podcast so that's briefly about him so i'm really excited about uh, uh, having him here today and the trigger is uh, tara who is another passionate volunteer Uh, so in the interest of time i may not spend too much time because uh, it no might need. take about half an hour no <laughs> to no no what no. she does <laughs> so she was discussing uh, basically she's uh, uh, collating her experience uh, by how uh, how various ngos or very various uh, self help groups are uh, co uh, contributing in this space especially uh, during this pandemic how the, the digital revolution is happening in pockets so she is trying to do her bit to ensure all these best practices are being shared amongst all uh, like minded people and in fact she is working globally with uh, uh, volunteers without boundaries uh, uh, probably we can uh, arrange one more session from her to know what exactly she does and uh, i don't know where she finds time she is also writing a book and as part of that book uh, she has been interviewing different people as part of that one of the people is mr sharma ji and sharma ji then she thought uh, while while he was sharing his experience she thought it would be good if he directly shares with all of us so that's why we are here today and uh, without uh, i think spending too much of time uh, let me hand it over to sharma ji and uh, let me also introduce uh, dr geeta mehta who just joined uh, thanks geeta for joining so i have told about you to both tara and sharma ji so yeah <laughs> so we will oh, discuss probably that. post session yeah yeah over to you sharma ji oh thank you uh, i'll be making a brief uh, it's not a brief actually the presentation will be a little longer uh, but please uh, forgive me if uh, you find some of them uh, rather simplistic okay but this is uh, generally the talk that uh, i address to, for the students Yes, sir. We can see it. Please. So please. I start with this usually. So how to be an innovator, and uh, generally when we say uh, an innovator, we always feel that uh, he is a genius, born genius, or born uh, uh, innovator, things like that. But my idea is that an innovator is a common man, like many of us, and uh, of course he starts like this. 
and uh, if you don't believe how a child can be innovative because the curiosity that is innate in the child is the one which makes uh, uh, you know the innovation possible if you don't believe please watch this and wherever you find something to love you can always send a message this is a lovely video that uh, i have uh, seen Watch the process of how the child solves a problem. Good to see so much a factor of safety. <laughs> plan A, plan B. <laughs> yeah, there is one more. Now he is looking into the future. Yeah. <laughs> And look at him. Now he reviews his solution. Takes the plunge. Leap of faith. <laughs> it is incredible to watch. Uh, and uh, I am always surprised how this could happen, whether it's somebody taught him or uh, it was a, a born intuition. But I always like to feel that, you know, we have something uh, in our, uh, you know, we, we have an innate uh, ability to solve problems and that somewhere we forget, probably. And that's what we do. When I go to schools, I first ask children about uh, to identify these people. And essentially, the school curriculum is such is such that uh, we get only about four, two people definitely identified. Maximum of three with Meghnath Saha here on the left hand corner, uh, but uh, the others are never identified. And I call them also as innovators. And uh, because many of you know about this, of course, uh, uh, Govind Pai is um, sorry, not uh, Govind Pai. This is. Um, Coin Pai, he is the one who actually uh, started the um, the microfinancing scheme in India and the syndicate bank and other thing. That was a very innovative process in the economics or the commerce field. And of course, uh, SS Bhatnagar put up a system of uh, uh, you know innovative laboratories across India. So when I ask children to identify some of these people, they don't. And they don't consider a mathematician also as a scientist, very, very rarely. Okay, she was the only one who has got a Fields Medal uh, in mathematics. And uh, she did it uh, when she was very young and she died at around 35 years of age. The same age that we talk about as uh, uh, about uh, Ramanujam when he died. And uh, this is something that always surprises me. Why don't children know about many of these aspects? And that is one thing uh, I change this slide usually depending upon the uh, area or the school at, that I visit and most of the time only two people are identified but uh, the others are not so this is the uh, problem that uh, we have so we don't teach or don't tell children that innovation is a process that we can always understand and learn rather than uh, you know um, you know thinking about that as a very difficult process and this slide i will not talk to uh, this elite audience but how do we go about this so let me start with the uh, quotes from one of the greatest innovators or inventors uh, that we saw in the last two centuries uh, thomas alva edison of course success is 99 percent perspiration and one percent inspiration so what does that mean and I would always translate that into the inspiration as an idea or an imagination, which is built up by uh, a lot of perspiration, that is effort of uh, providing skill, science or the skills. And this is how uh, I look at the process of uh, innovation. It starts with a small imagination. And that, of course, 
all you need is good imagination and a pile of junk so if we understand this process probably we can even start a, a very nice innovation club in the schools uh, and we don't even have to think of uh, adult laboratories uh, or sorry adult tinkering labs most of the time and uh, any innovation can happen in a small uh, school also uh, let me just look at this this is a beautiful advertisement When I show this uh, video uh, to children, uh, they're totally engaged, like in the first video that I showed. And then I asked them a question. So how many uh, innovations could you find in this? And ask them to identify them. And it's uh, very interesting that uh, they identify at the most two of the innovations. And a third one is always forgotten. And the third one is the, uh, you know, the lady has a problem, two problems. One is of baking uh, chapatis. The other one is, of course, uh, to keep her uh, child, you know, quiet. So she has found an innovation that she has a string attached to the doula and she's, uh, you know, swinging it. So simultaneously, she is doing this. And many people don't uh, identify this particular, part, especially the boys. But girls are very good in this. And I have found that most girl children, they immediately respond to that. And they say that, yes, this is the third innovation. Interestingly, that's where I start talking to them about what is an innovation. And it is the necessity that drives that boy to actually uh find something that and innovate a um, uh, you know what we call as um, in canada we call it as uh, ikla and uh, uh, i'm not getting my word in english right now uh, for, no not even forceps okay no, tongs, tongs. Tongs, tongs tongs okay tongs. Uh, yeah so exactly so this is this is something and the children immediately uh, understand that uh, uh, the necessity and the idea and the invention and these three are important components of any any innovation process so the first thing that in this process of innovation what we need to do is to identify the problem and it need not be the problem need not be uh, a very uh, you know uh, a complex or intricate one it can be as simple as uh, this particular problem she wants a space to sleep but the uh, place is not okay so she finds a solution of uh, you know making a mat by herself and here uh, the important thing to notice is that we ask the children what is the problem so it is not that making a mat is not the problem the problem is to find the right place to sleep and uh, then what is it that uh, she does she has a skill without that skill that match uh, the making of this mat is not possible so you need to have skill or a knowledge or science to uh, make an innovation and then of course you have to put in some effort to do this and this message usually is uh, um, the thing that i would like the children or uh, any innovator to understand the basically this is how the process i look at as the innovation process you need a problem then you need to think of a solution and then you use your skills or the knowledge or the science and your efforts to uh, make a solution and w once that is ready you test it and review it and then again go back to the cycle process so this is how an innovation is done and the last of course is the use it could be profit it could it need not be also a profit uh, making innovation the innovation can also be or invention can also be an idea a simple idea 
uh, like uh, we all know that einstein had a brain wave and uh, he had an idea and which has given us a lot of things today in the world that we understand and uh, uh, we take it for granted take for example i was uh, uh, today asked by a student uh, sir how do uh, what is the age of earth it made me start thinking in the process so how did we come to know about the age of earth and it is not one simple uh, calculation that uh, we did it it, it goes uh, beyond uh, a specific field of science and a number of uh, ideas number of theories uh, have been tested to say that today the earth is about 4.5 billion year old and where where does it start it starts from the discovery of uh, radioactivity and many other things and this is how uh, the innovations happen then devices of course we are all very familiar processes and new use process is uh, one of the thing that uh, uh, it uh, industry very well knows uh, how a process can be innovative and i would also put a new use of a already available uh, equipment or a process or something also as a innovation and any improvement in the uh, present uh, usage of a in innovation invention will also be an innovative use okay and these points i usually bring out uh, trying this okay it need not be in, in, innovation need not be big you can start with a small thing this is a chalk and uh, we find this problem in almost every classroom every classroom so uh, the problem is the problem can be solved in many different ways so we now have dust free chalks but even in those schools where we still use this uh, dust uh, uh, you know producing chalks can we have a solution so i show this to children and ask them okay this is one of the solution that we find but what do we do if we don't have a plastic like this or uh, if we want to do something in the classroom here itself so a lot of solutions come like using a kerchief and then and then i ask them a, another question saying why do you use the kerchief can we spoil that and then we will not be able to use the kerchief and all then another solution comes so a lot of solutions children think about uh, uh especially for this uh, problem so the thing is if we want to talk about innovation the first thing is to seed the idea of a problem in the mind of the children so what is a problem is the most important thing that we need to understand i have asked this question to uh, a lot of uh, uh, teachers as well as students so the simple question is please give me a problem which you want to solve now the problems that i get is we don't have power we don't have water we don't have uh, you know we get sleepy every day uh, uh, by nine o'clock and i don't sleep so these are the kind of uh, uh, problems so identifying a solvable problem is something that uh, we need to uh, train students and others to understand and this can also be it's something that uh, uh, we can also do at home of course this these are some of the examples that i give uh, this is a tray uh, with a simple this one so i asked children now suppose we have this solution uh, can you think of uh, an innovative improvement in this so the improvement can be in material improvement can also be in design of this instead of uh, carrying a cup can we carry something else with this so this is the kind of uh, uh, questions that uh, i start asking and we get novel answers for many of these things and in one of the classes that we had i showed one video about uh, uh, from arvind gupta toys uh, uh, to engage the children and uh, next day uh, in the same class when i went there for some other reason i found that a boy had actually prepared the same device uh, same type of toy but with a totally different kind of materials whatever he could get in his surroundings he had used that so that means the process of identifying the problem and the process of solving that was already uh, understood by that Ch uh, child although he was not aware how he he did he did that and this is what uh, we need to be telling 
or making children understand and uh, uh, do in the classrooms these are some of the things okay now what is a problem a problem is yes i can carry a cup of tea and a biscuit separately but what if i have only one hand to carry how do i do that now this is a solution and when i ask children about this they identify all the problems when i show this and ask them what is the problem and how did the solution come about they all say this and then the next question that i ask is why didn't we think of this solution or this problem so the question of course is that we never think that a problem is a problem we gloss over many of simple problems which can have solutions also and which might also need an innovation i can give you a personal example here and we had a tap uh, dripping a dripping tap in our home and uh, yeah we bear you know i tried all my uh, tricks on that but nothing could be done and i left it as it is so one day my sister came here and the next day i found the tap was not dripping what i found was she had just took a rubber band and uh, just put it around that and she found that you know you have to press it down so we tried all our means to do that she kept that pair rubber band there and now it is not dripping i can always change the tap also but this is something a solution that is simple and at the same time which we can always find at home and at hand and this is called the process of innovation and this if we can uh, inculcate in the children uh, 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 whether in the school or at home or any any place it will be very interesting i am changing my talk here uh, because basically what happens is that when we ask people why uh, you know we cannot innovate or why we don't want to be you know uh, you know uh how the answer exactly is i have no problem you ask anybody 60s teachers if they are if they are in the classroom and if i ask them how many of you have problems nobody speaks out and i go to them a, a little further and make them speak then maybe one or two raises their hand and they will say i have these problems but nobody thinks that you know they have a problem they may have a, a slipper which has a um, you know mm, mm, the touring is uh, torn or which has come off but they will not even think about that that they, they, that is not a problem so one of the things that we do in our uh, daily life is that we bear with the problem and go with that like i bore the uh, dripping tap problem so this is something that we also have to tell children identify see the problem and see that it is a problem that can be solved okay then the other excuse mostly uh, that we get is that yes i tried but could not succeed uh, of course many think that uh, the problem has already been solved so why should we again do that and uh, they lost is the most uh, uh, you know often heard answer i am not a science student i am not interested in science so therefore uh, i don't want to be an innovator now the question is do so only scientists innovate or are there other uh, kinds of innovation and this is something that we need to uh, seed in the minds of uh, children and uh, say that an innovation is something that everybody can do and the problems are everywhere and this is a, one of the most popular uh, uh, pictures the moment i display this of course everybody starts laughing and then i ask what is the problem so that is where the uh, problem starts and uh, maybe the lady who's found this solution is a fantastic innovator of course innovations are not always gadgets i have a couple of uh, other observations yeah uh, and, and and other excuses are the complacence yeah. like uh, like a frog in a warm water no? exactly we will we will think that this is how things has to be and it will be and we'll go on for example yes. let's look at uh, the edu the education from the children perspective they assume we have our, our duty is just to make ourselves present in the classroom that's it rest some magic uh, teachers will do and uh, the learning has to happen 
yeah. whether they think that way or not that's all they think morning 8 8, 8 o'clock or 8 30 they have to be just present in the classroom that's it there ends their duty okay but they don't realize that that is the precious time which they are spending precious time of their life right even in attending one day's class the same case is with the teachers the, the teachers think here is the curriculum given to me if i uh, go through these notes or if i write this much on the whiteboard or blackboard my job is done okay nobody is uh, especially yeah in the, in this case uh, we should give benefit of doubt to the ch uh, children if they are young but teachers definitely definitely they can make a difference okay it is not just curriculum which they are in for they are there to ignite the aspirations so i think uh, that's where the missing link is that's because if you are really keen if if you are really you are if your heart beats for the children definitely we have seen uh, even in hosserly or hd quote wherever we go yeah. okay in uh, whatever you do you do also for example when you started this podcast the uh, the exact reason is the simple text is boring okay yes. there should be a way in which uh, you can make it interesting whether it is audio format or the way you write or the picture you write or even the examples which you are showing okay it's easy to replace the clock but definitely you are sending a message by the salvaging or whatever even the broken thing exactly right? okay yeah yeah what you sir and of course this is uh, very popular among the children because this relates to them very closely so you have to carry a bag on you also have to carry an umbrella and you have to get into the bus it is very difficult but this is a simple innovation uh, which uh, can uh, cover both your bag as well as uh, your head and you can be happy about that and this doesn't need uh, too much of a thing so this is what i tell them and i have not innovated any of these things what i have done is to put together many of these things to convey the idea that the problem identification of problem and solving a problem or becoming an innovator is not a born uh, you know character it can be a learned trained uh, you know thing and this is the other uh, thing okay what is the problem here basically again i ask what is the problem identify the problem so state the problem right and the solutions will be simple now here the problem is not that we have to create an umbrella but what we have to have is a portable shade and portable shade can be anything we do that very simply we take our uh, chunni and put it on our head or even a kerchief and uh, uh, go about so uh, this man does something much better than all those things and this is a beautiful photograph to uh, show the contrast about two uh, things that solve the same problem and the contrast also is very interesting and therefore we can state and then uh, tell the children that yes the first thing that one has to do is to state the problem right it is not that i want to use a thermocol as a umbrella or i want to make an umbrella but the problem is here to have a portable shade so when what does that mean the portable shade means something that gives a shadow over my head and when that is the problem you can always look for other solutions the solution need not be the same thing so no innovation is final of course so edison started with uh, the uh, incandescent bulb we have come here maybe in the future who knows my hand may be a fluorescent uh, light emitting uh, uh, in our device because of biotechnology that is also something that we are already seeing in many of the uh, laboratories so we have animals which shine which give out light okay and now that can be another innovation that we can we don't know so we look for light where it is not there and uh, the solutions are many so i tell children that if you already feel that we already have a solution so it is not the end of it so you can always go further and look at this and what are the improvements that we can do we can think of alternative uh, resources that we can use in an innovation or alternative uses of the innovations or of course reducing the cost of the uh, uh, device or the process that we see and these are the things that we have done in india in almost everywhere say for example even in drugs 
uh, in the recent COVID, these things. We talked about the repurposing drugs. Uh, what does that mean? That means we were looking for uh, you know, a process where we could uh, uh, manufacture drugs using resources that were available for which we need not depend upon the other uh, countries or uh, maybe we need, that we need not import that were already available and the end product we knew and therefore could we have a different process so this is something that i always ask children and an example that i uh, present before elders is this can we make ragi mudde easier Making ragi mudde in Karnataka is uh, usually a difficult uh, process uh, because you have to keep on churning the uh, ragi flour in a very hot uh, boiling water, and it uh, you know actually drains all your energy. And uh, hats off to all those ladies who make it; uh, they make this tasty dish. But then, can we make it a simpler process? And we have, and that is already uh, developed by CFTRA or other uh, institutes here. And the process, so th that is the simplest uh, uh, thing that we can do. So, but then the process is changed. The, we get a new innovative product and that costs, of course. So the other excuse people say that I tried, but I couldn't <coughs> succeed. Of course, again, uh, the, uh, Thomas Alva Edison comes to help. He says, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that don't work. He had tried several ways of uh, uh, several materials uh, for the incandescent bulb. And in fact, uh, he just stopped at the carbon fiber uh, uh, when he had the first incandescent bulb. But later, many other elements were uh, discovered. Uh, that is uh, the like uh, tungsten. Tungsten came much later, but before that, osmium and other materials were used, which were very resistant to heat. And that was one of the problem. The problem was that when the resistance is high, the heat will also be very high and uh, the carbon would burn out. And so they wanted to have a very high recalcitrant uh, material. And the, the problem was stated like that, and people started looking for that material. That's how the chemistry of uh, elements also came. Uh, you don't need to invent a rocket or a robo always. And uh, I feel that the atal, uh, you know, the emission, yeah, atal uh, tinkering labs are focusing on something that uh, you, you, again will standardize our thinking process. Uh, I, I think there must be a way that the standardizing standardization of thinking process is avoided in uh, uh, especially when we talk about developing the skills and what are the skills we are talking about uh, is that is are, are the only skills are the skills that are now limited in the atal uh, uh, labs the only ones that we require for the future or are there other skills also that we require and this is the question that I always ask, and the solution is here. So a pouring of uh, uh, tea, uh, of course, it's very simple. But then on the right side, what you have is uh, uh, maybe this is a Photoshop, but if I can get a material like this, it will be fantastic. But then it is a great challenge because a butter, even if it is uh, uh, you know frozen, you cannot keep it uh, hard like this or even soft jelly like this uh, at the room temperature that we have so how do we do that is there a process where i can keep the butter hard but at the same time uh, uh, it will be soft to you know mm, you know uh, make a sandwich yeah so the, this is a challenge so I, I i ask children they say that once they look at the I, I, I always feel that this is a Photoshop picture or maybe real, I don't know. But then this is what happens. Utility is innovation, the simplest. And uh, for uh, plus two students, you know, keeping a big book and reading that is always difficult. Or can they have something like this? These are all available in the market. These are all available in the market. And uh, these are some simple innovations which or, you know, or specifically, you, you know, designed to solve particular problems, particular problems. And that is the beauty of those things. So when I show this, I ask them, 
about the problem also what is the problem and how do we solve this are there any other solutions that they can think of where do we get the tools for uh, innovations self explanatory i don't have to say anything into this of course new devices will not be there this is a very 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 much like the uh, photo especially for convent children and uh, where you know they are not supposed to carry many of these things in to the school so the moment i say that okay now you can carry if you think of this then uh, uh, they understand and the other of course is this a novel use and this this you know gets the maximum laughter engagement from the children and then we'll get a lot of questions from them how is it of course they also may be trying this at home i don't know and mm -hmm. i ask them what is the problem and they say that yes he wants to have uh, the things closer and he doesn't have a plate or anything or space on this and so he has made that a beautiful uh, uh, thing a number of questions number of answers uh, will come there and this i show that uh, the the contrast between an innovation and uh, how the need makes people to innovate on their own and the left side is a uh, uh, something that uh, we must always think about not only in terms of innovation but other things also on the other hand the right side also shows how the guide has something whereas the child has uh, maybe father so but uh, the contrast is very striking but the purpose is the same so the goal will be the same the problem is the same the solutions are different and the resources that you use are also different so what resources you use and how you innovate to solve a problem will become very very important in the problem solving things this is a office portable office we talk about and his office his workshop everything together and whoever invented it long back we have seen all these things but we never gave a uh, thought to the entire process is a tremendous innovator now I, I might ask this question to you also what is this and probably yeah, if any of you can think about that and answer i'll be happy hello yeah it, it looks like a paper clip for me exactly so when i ask many people the answer doesn't come so kiran the first time <laughs> <laughs> okay now improvement in design is also an innovation and this is something the design engineering uh, people do but uh, uh, how do we improve the design you have to keep the basic design basic purpose and basic parameters of the uh, things the same because here in the paper clip you want to have a loop that you know holds good and that is something that is basic you cannot change but all other things you can change and that is the point that uh, uh, we need to make there yeah where do we get the idea and this is something this is called a bomb beetle and it has got a chamber where it uh, uh, lets in a small amount of a chemical and that chemical explodes like anything it's a very small this one at room temperature at ordinary pressure how does it explode like this is a challenge and once we understand that the internal combustion engines can be much better much much better and this is a living example can we get these solutions from the nature as we watch the nature and a lot of uh, technology a lot of science uh, is a, a mimic of uh, what we find in the nature and uh, if we can find these things that will be very good and watching the nature is something that i always see and here is another innovation this is a robo okay this is a robo and the inspiration is here in fact 
uh, the, the this is an experiment that, that shows that uh, the uh, cockroach can withstand almost uh, 800 times its own weight and uh, it can squeeze in in a uh, in a narrow space which is 10 times thinner than it is you cannot crush them and that is the design of the body and that gives a scope for an innovation like this so i go from the simplest to the a little higher one of course we all know this and i think uh, uh, info info campus also has a a uh, structure like this but this is a lesson i learned uh, long back some 40 years ago uh, with a person that you know to an innovator doesn't have to be a problem solving doesn't have to always uh, to do with something like uh, deg degrees or anything it's a mindset it's a process it's a thinking that we have to do so when i was in uh, manipal uh, uh, doing research in kasturba medical college we used to maintain about 4000 to 5000 mice uh, for our experiments and uh, one of the important thing that we had to do was to provide them sterilized food and sterilized food means autoclaved food so the food had to be uh, completely autoclaved and the uh, cups that we uh, used uh, used also had to be autoclaved how to be fully sterilized and we had a problem with this we were using cups like this and the moment we autoclave uh, they used to get stuck together it, it was very difficult to remove them they used to be very you know stuck very fast it was very difficult for us to remove and the other thing was we were not supposed to touch them because they are sterilized so how do we remove them we had a problem that uh, the every day we used to lose somewhere around 100 to 150 cups and that was a cost uh, for the laboratory and uh, we asked the people to do it uh, separately uh, and not to pile them up and then do it but then that would take long long time we had to have 4000 cups sterilized and the whole day would be spent only in that then one day we found that uh, there were no complaints about uh, these uh, cups getting stuck we were surprised and we thought that the uh, workers there uh, who were doing this probably were cheating because it will be troublesome for them to do it every day and uh, the whole day so we just sent a spy in fact i was the spy i went around and kept checking on them what i found was this he's he was a seventh uh, standard uh, you know dropout and uh, he was called uh, his name was jay Sheila. i still remember him a young smiling boy and what he did was one day he put all of them into very hot water because the autoclave also has got a lot of hot water and automatically they got separated so he started doing the same thing with everything he would put into a large uh, bucket uh, hot, very steaming hot water and then uh, put all these things into that all those that uh, were you know stuck together and automatically they will get separated he will pour out the water and the without touching them or with a, with a very hot sterilized water he was able to do all these things and he didn't know that you know hot water is sterilized boiling water can be the, like this and all he had just found something by trial and error and this is one of the uh, very common ways of doing it whereas we could immediately find why that happens okay this we know the cups get stuck because there is a vacuum and we also know that there is some a little bit of water or moisture in that and if you could expand that then we could have simply separated this this was a very simple solution all of us were very knowledgeable uh, people but uh, the solutions don't come that way unless you state the problem perfectly and so effectively we can train students or anybody to get into problem solving the best way is so is to create innovative clubs clubs in schools where we ask them about problems make them identify problems provide them resources and uh, uh, give multiple ideas to solve a problem say uh, two plus two is 
is 4 of course we know but 2 square is also a 4 and uh, of course uh, 2 into 2 is also a 4 so this is that a solution has many or rather uh, a problem can be solved in many ways is something that we need to bring into the minds of children and in case of mathematics also when we say that a new solution has been found it is not some, something out of the ordinary see what happens is that we know that a problem can be solved in this way can we do it in a much simpler way or in an alternative way so that's all the mathematicians also look for and these are the things once get into the mind probably the mindset will also change and we will have uh, a lot more innovations uh, unfortunately uh, many of these uh, things are not even taught uh, even in uh, where the technology is developed or other things people learn on their own and doing things by trial and error is something that costs a lot and we if we can train people to think about innovating probably we can also reduce the cost and this is what uh, uh, i think we should be doing in the uh, you know uh, you know tinkering labs that is what uh, uh, i think i need to and if people are very interested in these schools who are very serious about innovations and uh, please send me a problem we can brood over that we can think over that and uh, try to find a solution and if not if you create an in innovation club and people like me or uh, kiran we are there to come and mentor also so we we won't give you the solution of course i won't uh, i am not i won't say that uh, i'm a uh, pro problem solver everywhere but then of course we can identify the problem and uh, we can also think with you if you have identified the problem correctly and uh, these things can be done at school level this is what i would like to do and of course kiran has talked a lot about uh, jana suddhi uh, jana suddhi is uh, a podcast which is produced at zero cost and uh, of course uh, uh, at uh, we have 15 members in the team i started alone uh, when teachers asked me about the resources they wanted uh, a lot, you know resources uh, about the latest you know research being done across the world and many of them were not very comfortable with english and uh, the students many students were not very comfortable or were not competent in in uh, reading on their own so we thought that audiobooks would be one of the solutions when i asked the teachers they said it will be very difficult to produce audiobooks because we need a studio and all so i started with uh, probably you are looking at me and this is a gift that uh, Kiran gave me four years ago. And uh, it still is a fantastic device for me. I use this sitting in front of a TV. I can record, remove the background, and get a very studio quality uh, audio. And this is good for voice. So I use only the voice and open source software so that uh, the cost will be reduced. And uh, I also have the team. Of course, I do a lot of uh, uh, work like uh, writing the script and all because I am competent about that, uh, competent in that, and I can do it much faster. So I do the scripting and I send it to the team members. The team members record it on their smartphone. It comes back to me. I edit it, then uh, package it into a, a nice music with the music, and then send it to all the people on WhatsApp. WhatsApp mainly because. Uh, at the time when we started uh, uh, four, four and a half years ago, uh, people, the teachers in the rural schools where I go and mentor, uh, didn't have access to internet. And uh, the internet was also not so fast. So we started sending them uh, over WhatsApp so that they can go home where they have a faster internet connectivity and uh, download that and then um, uh, you know share with others and that was the thing but now the things have changed i have kept it this way the it works because it is a model where we have zero revenue and zero cost input uh, but if you take the time that we spend over that that is also very less i put in a lot of effort but uh, the others uh, uh, spend only about 20 25 minutes once in fortnight so we make it a sort of a uh, rolling uh, responsibility uh, for the you know voiceover 
so that uh, nobody is bothered because they are not getting they are not compensated about their for their efforts so i wouldn't like to uh, trouble them every day so this is how we have uh, designed this it has carried on for the last four years and uh, today i got a message from one of the teachers who said that uh, every morning if i don't listen to that uh, i feel something is missing in my life and that is a greatest compliment that uh, an effort can get uh, and jana sudhe has got it today thank you very much and this is what i want to share with you um <clears throat> yeah thank you sharma sir so for others uh, yeah uh, just to let you know how we are extending this experience and expertise of uh, sharma sir tomorrow uh, uh, evening to, uh, only tomorrow we are going to have the session with the children at uh, five o'clock in the evening otherwise we normally have it at 11. so i actually present this uh, whatever the output which sharma sir has created for example the audio podcast so one day i just called them and told them the problem statement that uh, uh, currently all of us are fortunate to be accessing the internet and we are having smartphone then what about the children who don't have access to the smartphone or to, who don't have access to the internet how how is that we can help uh, and these are middle school children who have come up with their innovative ideas so all we have to do is that they say a uh, problem well defined is uh, uh, like 50% work is done. So now that they clearly understood the problem, then it's really overwhelming on how creative they have come up with the solution. Okay, they have come up with the solution for the people who don't have access to internet and our people who don't have access to the feature, uh, the smartphones who have feature phones, what is that we can do? Then they also identify the problem what about the people who don't have uh, who have uh, visual impairment who cannot see even though they have access who cannot see what is how is that we can help through the audio means if the if, if a video is designed to be consumed like a video obviously it cannot just re replace just because it has voice what is that we we, we can do so they have uh, interestingly come up with the solution so in my experience, innovation is not just about in inventing something new. You will also come up with a lot of tools which uh, uh, during the course of life. For example, in this case, the students have come across uh, the Scratch software, which we which they normally use, use it for fun. But suddenly they found a utility, how we can even distribute this audio podcast created by Sharma Ji in a very intuitive way. And this uh, good part is since uh, Scratch, you can easily upload on MIT portal. That means it is, it is you, you instantaneously, you are getting access to a learning management platform where you are hosting your output as well. That means you can seamlessly uh, share the content to the students just by sharing the URL. So that they realized. Then now they are coming, churning out solution after solution, how they can help multilingual. The, quite a few of them have come up with uh, uh, menu options in three languages. So look at it. The fifth and sixth standard students are coming up with solutions like this. So, so people, uh, the work which is being done by Sharma Ji is an, also an inspiration. When we keep sharing uh, the in, in uh, the messages, for example, the Sharma Sharma sir works also in the tribal area in HD Kote, where all these tribal uh, ch the children of these tribal folks need a lot of they they don't get uh, as uh, uh, good infrastructure as the city kids get it so if we make something successful over there then obviously it, it will help the schools and the teachers uh, across even in the cities that's what we had seen even sharmaji and tara had come to one of the private schools here in electronic city the delhi public school then even those uh, teachers were very surprised to see the best practices which we have been following in uh, in Hosaldi, for that matter, near HD Kote. So we were able to seamlessly sh showcase what uh, the work which is uh, created by the teachers so that these people also can learn. Another great part, uh, uh, advantage of this is, since everything is digital now, we can keep sharing. It does not matter whether they are government school or private school or created by the teachers, created by the students. So we, so we act like uh, uh, the uh, catalysts or uh, the mediators who are sharing the best practices amongst all the communities here the entire objective is to make learning interesting and effective 
so that's what we are successfully uh, are able to do it so th th those of you who have joined us for the first time so you might be wondering how is how is this directly related to uh, the helping the uh, rural government schools or teachers even in during the pandemic time so this is just the tip of iceberg which you got a feel for today how uh, we using limited resources we are trying to help both the teachers and the students so uh, if you uh, those of you who will continue to be associated with us you will keep uh, understanding what more work uh, how we are taking from these discussions beyond and the the key part is to make uh, for example today uh, probably we are 15 or 20 of us who listen to this story now how do we seamlessly take it to the larger audience uh, because it could be just sharing the recording of today's session or keep sharing our experiences or our experiments uh, how we are able to do it and uh, more importantly how is it working for example uh, e even the teachers who normally join us during this saturday session they they look at it a village rural village urdu medium teacher is now comfortably able to create a video on her mobile phone also in, uh, who is uh, also she is able to seamlessly merge augmented reality effects into that it is not just for fun or just for magic it's all relevant videos which they have brought in she has brought in and she is using urdu script to create the videos and share it again to, to uh, through whatsapp to the to her students again she got inspired by what we discussed and what we demonstrated during these sessions here so that is the real impact which we are able to do even if we are able to transform one teacher i'm sure she will be sharing with her uh, colleagues and uh, her students that will that is going to inspire many more uh, teachers and students that that is the uh, purpose of these meetings which we normally have so any other comments uh, feedback um, you're most welcome you can unmute and speak anybody i was just thinking of uh... Uh, but uh, the innovative skills of children. Uh, we were in one of these government schools where, uh, which is very, very resource poor. And uh, then we had, uh, you know, like only about uh, four laptops or something like that. And then they were working, they need, need, they were doing something with music, bringing in music. And then they had this earphone and two of the children were sharing. One was using one of one part of the earphone and the other one was using the right. And uh, we were looking at it and we were so amused by it. So the uh, children left to them, so they're not at all conscious of it. We were observing that and we were kind of stunned by it. But uh, they, it was just a natural part of their own uh, invention uh, just to satisfy their needs. And uh, I think we need to encourage this in school and uh, we don't give space for this to grow. That's the sad part. I think as teachers, if we are conscious of this, then that would be really great. <clears throat> yeah, thanks Tara for that. Yeah, we have seen even during the uh, Sunday's classes tomorrow, you can see if somebody is struggling, somebody is lagging behind, you can see how other students will pitch in immediately so that we go ahead and learn new things. So that's really, it shows that there is no, they don't, there's no competition there. They would like to ensure the team, they, they take their team members also along, even though they, they, they are meeting virtually, they don't know each other. They are ready to uh, come forward and help. So yeah, this is what we wanted to share today. Uh, we would like to listen from all of you. Uh, what did you get from today's discussion and how is it going to help uh, in your uh, forthcoming uh, social impact which you would like to uh, join hands with us and also you can ask if, if you have any questions we are more than happy to tell you and connect the dots um hi kiran uh, this is selena here yeah selena yeah i i think a very inspiring thank you um, mr sharma um i, I think we, we've seen these examples right on the net and all of that but to bring all of this together and then take it back to the team, um, very, very encouraging. So my team and I definitely would want to partner with you. And we'll, we'll work with Kiran to see how we can contribute. Sure. To the separate. Welcome. Yeah, if anybody is, uh, anyway, hope, hopefully once this uh, COVID settles down and all of us gets uh, 
uh, both the dose of vaccination so we can if we can start traveling because i have personally gone to these schools which where sharma ji also goes uh, whether it is hedatale or hd kote or hoseli so when you really see uh, the innovation happening even swami vivekananda youth movement uh, that suim ngo they are supporting more than 300 schools across karnataka and how innovatively they have created whether it is a science lab or the maths how how they uh, basically the, through this generation kiran you went on mute uh, we are not able to listen you yeah they have created their own uh, radio station over there in hd kote it's about 40 kilometers from uh, mysore then you can see how innovatively they it is not like a boring uh, radio uh, transmission which happens they innovate they create even the podcast when sharma ji conducts it is like a drama he, i have seen him experiment like uh, with the volunteers across multiple cities during this covid time he had created the audio bits and stitched it together so it it was looking as if it is they are uh, an acting in in the same stage so like that they also uh, relay directly in the radio station for teaching maths they also have a program called lekka the katte so so like that they and also they uh, uh, identify various personas it is not just about students they also take some of these daily wage workers as the persona so farmers as a persona and they create programs specifically for them and they relay and they they try and ensure that it reaches all of these beneficiaries not only that it is not one way then there is a very uh, very strong feedback loop where they they also quickly uh, ensure how how the, the how these uh, children are how these beneficiaries are learning it's really overwhelming to see how they get connected through through and through so it is yeah. not yeah Go ahead, uh, can i uh, talk about the lekar katte here yeah, yeah so lekar katte was a pro program that uh, we conducted on the community radio uh, janadwani uh, specifically uh, aiming at uh, high, uh, you know higher primary schools uh, children uh, it was for about 180 episodes in a year that means uh, three episodes uh, every week and we wanted teachers to participate in this and we invited a group of teachers to participate and uh, provide us with the scripts unfortunately the teacher said mathematics cannot be talked about uh, it has to be taught on uh, with a blackboard and uh, we had a project to uh, continue so what we did was to put together a team of uh, uh, locals and uh, teach them about uh, scripting about radio about uh, drama and all these aspects and we uh, you know selected some volunteers after a workshop and made them as the uh, you know characters in this and this was all you know happened we asked them what kind of a drama that we should have should we have a drama should we have a talk should we have a discussion and all these things the people preferred a drama and they identified uh, the specific nature of the drama also that uh, there must be some these many characters and uh, these are the thing roles that they have to play and all these things so we had a drama uh, interestingly what happened was uh, we had a, a girl and a, a sister and a brother in the drama parents and uh, their grandmother grand uh, parents and this was the whole curriculum was talked about in a different way it is not just the curriculum uh, it was curriculum only but it was presented in a different way like they would go to some uh, fair and uh, there they will see something round and then they talk about sphere they talk about circle and the nature of the circle and all these things and uh, the boy is naughty asking uh, a lot of questions and the girl is intelligent so this is how they you know gave the roles for the children and this was so effective the role play was so effective we used to take these uh, audios to schools where the uh, station was not uh, broadcasting and uh, we call it as narrow casting we used to take it there and play uh, in front of children and uh, next week we would go and ask them about the question if we, we will get the feedback and uh, play the next one and when i went for a review uh, i asked uh, some of these uh, kids uh, which is the role that you would like to play in the drama you know i believed that the naughty boy would be the one uh, they liked but unfortunately that was not the case almost every boy and girl they said we want to be the girl 
who is intelligent and who is asking questions sir, your voice solve is, uh, okay yeah, your voice is breaking yeah okay. i think uh, the let me just rephrase uh, the key thing yes the the lakkad katte was designed for the students and uh, good to see that uh, experiments are happening in 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 that hsd kote area and if anybody is interested to know we would be happy to share more about that program and how the entire thing was conceptualized and delivered and it is happening continuously and uh, interestingly we we are also going to reuse that content of that uh, uh, drama uh, which was relayed in the uh, janadwani uh, radio station so we are going to uh, uh, get that audio clips and we i will give it to the students who are joining us on sundays this middle school and high school they are going to arrange this audio uh, podcast or audio files in a nice way on scratch on uh, with a nice navigatable menu and they will make it available and good part with scratch is it runs seamlessly even on the mobile phone that means even if they do it on on the computer look at it there the, these children thanks to mit they are getting a world class cloud platform which instantaneously they can publish and make it available to the students so here once we tune that then we can easily bring it on any other uh, we cap it in a very lightweight so that we can do uh, thanks to our head start uh, program that uh, uh, eventually we would like to get it over there but here since the students are involved so that makes it more relevant and more more contextual and they will also feel good that their contribution is uh, reaching out to thousands of uh, the students so yeah, we are really excited about uh, how things are coming together and how passionate volunteers across india are joining hands now so it is just uh, uh, only we are limited only by interest and our bandwidth to make a huge difference i'm really very happy about how the things are progressing so any other suggestions and comments folks we will just try and uh, close it in next 4 5 minutes rajesh satyanshu raghavendra kiran rajesh here can you hear me yeah rajesh yeah this is the yeah, first yeah, the first time that i joined uh, this session today and it is it seems so interesting to me and as a parent also uh, 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 we have we think this way a uh, number of times and uh, i think that uh, this is interesting idea to come forward and and see if we can contribute to the society some way uh, i don't know how it will uh, shape over but uh, me and my team would definitely would love to partner with you so i'm looking forward to uh, the next session akiran thank you sure sure yeah today intentionally i invited all of you so that you can observe how we discuss so probably uh, tomorrow also you can just observe and uh, if you have any children please bring them along i will share the link again Uh, tomorrow <clears throat> tomorrow most probably we'll do it in webex because i'm expecting more than 100 students tomorrow and your students also can get uh, to basically they will also get inspired by this enthusiasm of these youngsters so that is really uh, wonderful then again we can get back uh, on monday or tuesday then how we can divide the work and how each one of you in your own circle in your own apartment complex uh, because uh, now that we cannot move around so uh, freely as we used to do before pandemic so then we can start virtually uh, definitely we, there's a lot which each of us can do so i think uh, yeah uh, we can see a lot many things uh, to make this world a better place so let's close the session here i think sharma ji has to would like to attend one more uh, interesting topic so if anybody are interested i will just forward uh, the same invite if anybody has time you can or tomorrow anyway the recording also will be made available so thanks a lot and uh, have a nice evening thank you mr sharma thank you thank you, thank you sharma sir thank you, thank you mr sharma and everyone else yeah thank you kiran thank you mr sharma thank you thanks